Oh, hello. I bet you want to learn a little bit more about green screen infusion since you clicked on this. Well, let's do that. All right, so this is going to be a little bit more of an advanced tutorial. So if you don't know the basics of fusion, this is gonna be uh, a little bit difficult. And if you don't know fusion very well, I would heartily recommend getting our Pro Compositing in Fusion basics course. We go through how Fusion works, how to composite and do visual effects in Fusion. We go through some basic green screen stuff. It's perfect if you're wanting to do fancy things in your videos in Fusion. A lot of people are really enjoying this course. So make sure to check that out, groundcontrol.film. So we have our clip here of this lovely lady just being happy, I guess. And we wanna remove this green screen background and put her on kind of a photo background. And we're actually set up pretty well here. We have a very well shot green screen. It's very even. And this is typically what you wanna aim for when it comes to shooting green screen. This is gonna be a pretty realistic tutorial if you shoot green screen well. Now, if you don't shoot green screen well, there's a lot more to deal with. We might do that in a future video, but we're gonna assume that you did a decent job shooting this, okay? I already have my color space set up here. We are working in DaVinci YRGB, no color management on the project level. We have our original footage, which is this right here. It's log footage shot in Canon C Log 3. And so we're just taking this Canon C Log 3 and putting this into DaVinci Wide Gamut in linear. No tone mapping, no gamut mapping. Then we have another color space transform at the end, which takes our DaVinci Wide Gamut linear and converts it to DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. Again, no tone mapping or gamut mapping. That gives us an image that looks like this. And we have a LUT on our footage here that just approximates what this is gonna look like when we color grade it. This is just generated from the color page. We set up a color space transform DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate to Rec. 709 with luminance mapping and saturation compression on. And then I just generated this LUT by right-clicking, generate LUT 65 point cube. And then I loaded that LUT right here on our viewer so that we can see what this is gonna look like after it's color graded. Whew. So let's actually get into our compositing here. The main way to get rid of a green screen in the Fusion page is by using an effect called Delta Keyer. So I'll select this color space transform, shift space bar and type DEL. That'll bring up our Delta Keyer. And even before we do this, it's a really good idea to denoise your footage when you're gonna do a green screen. It makes a huge difference. Now, you can use the built-in noise reduction if you have the studio version, you can use uh, just the noise reduction here, and it is very good, but you do have to kind of know what you're doing. I like to use neat video reduce noise because it's just so easy. My goodness, okay? And this works in the free version of Resolve. It's just a plugin. All you do is select this node and hit prepare noise profile. That'll bring up neat video, and I'm just gonna select the biggest section I can from the green screen and say build profile and apply. Literally don't have to do anything other than that, and it will reduce the noise, and it does a really, really good job of getting rid of our noise here. If we look at the blue channel and zoom in here, here's with the noise, and here's with the noise reduction applied. It's a massive, massive difference, and that's really gonna help our key. So we have our denoised footage. We're bringing that into the Delta here, and I'm just gonna start out with our background color here. I'll grab our eyedropper and just drop this onto the screen. I'll kind of move this around until we don't have this kind of blue tint. Just make it so it's the clearest we can, and let go there. And by default, we'll have a pretty decent key. I can bring up this Delta keyer in the first viewer by hitting one on the keyboard. And I'm gonna go up here to this little color wheel thing, and I'm gonna select alpha. That's gonna show us our matte. This is a lot easier way to see what kind of matte we're generating here. And overall, it's pretty good. It's, it's not a terrible matte. There are some kind of gray pixels here. There's a few holes here. Generally for a matte, you want it solid white and solid black because anything that's gray is gonna be semi-transparent, which is great for pieces of our hair, but pretty much bad for everything else. So what we need to do is adjust our key here to make our matte be solid black in the background and solid white in the foreground. So the best way to do that is just to go over to matte right here and play with this threshold a little bit. Now this can get you in trouble if you go too far, but we're gonna be really gentle with this. And the first thing that we're gonna do is really look at our hair detail. We're gonna fix some other stuff, but we really wanna keep this hair detail because that's what kind of breaks green screen keys a lot. Other thing that we can do is go up here to the three dots on this left viewer and bring up gain gamma. And if I take this gamma down a little bit, we can see it's a little bit easier to see the holes in our mat. And so we want to adjust this threshold here. We'll take the high threshold down until we just fill in those holes. I'm just gonna bring it 
down a little bit just so we get rid of those holes here. Here's the difference. Don't want to bring it down too much. If we bring it down too much, it's just going to kill our hair detail like this. Bring it down too much, it's going to make rings around our hair. It's going to be way too much. So we just want to bring it down a little bit so we still have these wispy pieces of hair, but it's not too crazy. Okay? That's good for the high threshold. That's just how much white is there. I'm also going to push the gamma up a little bit and we can work on the dark threshold. See, there's all this gray here. And if we take the low threshold to the right, we can crunch out some of that gray. And we don't need to go totally crazy because we are gammaing this up a little bit, but something like that's probably good. And I'll reset our gamma. And if that still looks nice, then we're going to be in good shape. All right. So we still have some hair detail here. We have a little bit of kind of gray on this screen right here. It's not that big a deal. We can mask this out. What we really want to make sure of is that our hair looks good. Okay. So this is a pretty good start. To kind of test this out, let's go ahead and grab a background here and we'll just make this kind of pinkish purple. And we're going to merge our Delta key here over our background like this. And we'll bring our background into our color space transform. So now she's over this pink background. If we can make this look good on just a crazy pink background, it's going to look good on anything. A photo is a lot more forgiving than just this solid background. But if we zoom in here, we'll notice we still have this hair detail. Looks pretty good. In fact, we can kind of do a wipe here to make sure that we're keeping as much detail as we can. Up here in the upper left hand corner, there's this little A. This means that we're viewing buffer A, which is just a fancy way of saying this is the A version of the image. And so if we switch over to buffer B, there's nothing loaded in our second viewer here. Let's go ahead and grab color space, transform, uh, reduce noise, and hit two on the keyboard. And this will bring up our footage before we key it. And I'm actually going to take this color space transform. Let's copy this and paste that right here. And we'll just push this into the color space transform. This is just so we can see what it looks like with the color space transform on it. I'll hit two on the keyboard and put our LUT on again. There's our preview LUT. We have kind of our original footage that's denoised in buffer B and we have our keyed footage over the pink in buffer A. And if we switch to buffer split wipe, then we can wipe in between these and we can really preview the difference that our key is making here. So let's zoom in right here and let's just move this back and forth. And we can see we've done a really good job of keeping pretty much all of that hair detail without it looking crazy. Like even this little wispy parts right here are still there in the key. We're not crushing out any of that hair detail. And man, this is, uh, this is pretty good. We even have this little part right here where you can kind of see through, see that green behind. And look, there's that pink behind. And that works pretty well. And so we can kind of go through and just check our key this way. And I'd say we did a pretty good job there. Pretty good job. So we got our hair looking nice. We'll just switch back to buffer A. And that's a pretty good key overall. But with Delta Keyer, you'll notice a couple things. One is that sometimes it adds a bunch of kind of grain and like weird things to the image. I don't know if it's quite happening here, but you do see that a lot. It kind of makes everything really noisy. And so what you do in this Delta Keyer is you go over to Matt right here and here where it says replace mode. Let's switch this back to source because what it's trying to do is it's trying to replace parts of our image with this kind of gray and it just doesn't do a good job. So it's better just to take off replace mode and go to source. And then we'll also go over to our mask here and where it says solid replace mode, switch that to source as well. That'll get rid of the annoying kind of blockiness that happens sometimes with our green screen footage. This especially happens if you haven't reduced the noise. Ugh, it can get ugly. But now that's going to work really well for our key. There are a couple other things to notice. One is here on her shoulder, she has kind of this green outline, which we don't want, like a little green halo around this. And there are a few different ways that we can do that. If we feel like there's actually like a green stroke around here, we can kind of erode this. So if I take this erode dilate, I'm going to ruin some stuff, but if we take this, we can actually kind of just choke this down a little bit and that'll get rid of the edge like that. We can also go to fringe here and we can adjust our green magenta for our fringe. And we might be able to kind of adjust this a little bit. We can take our fringe size up a little bit and we can kind of color correct the edges. And that can work depending on what you're doing, but it also kind of leaves this weird ring around it. So sometimes that might not be the best case either. We especially see the outline here on her finger. It's just not good. So the reality of a real life green screen 
is that you have to do a lot of work to actually make it look good. You pretty rarely can just like click on a background and delete it and have it look amazing. So one thing that will help a little bit is if we go to our fringe and we say spill method here, if we go to something like well done, what that is gonna do is get rid of some of our green tint here. So if we take this spill suppression down like this, we can see it's kind of green right there and we can kind of take it off a little bit as we push up our spill suppression. Same thing on her arm here. It's a little bit green around there and that'll help just suppress that a little bit. So that's one way we can do this. But what we're really gonna need to do is shrink this just a little bit to get rid of that green edge. You can do this a bunch of different ways. The way that I like to do it is after our Delta keyer, we're gonna add a matte control. So I'll grab this and drag this down here. And the matte control lets us adjust a matte that we plug into it. You can do a ton of stuff with matte control, but this is a really good way to adjust a green screen. And you have a lot of the controls that you do in the Delta keyer here, but it's kind of split out into its own node. So you can do kind of more adjustments just in this separate node. So I can zoom into our finger here and I can push our contract and expand in, make sure to click post multiply image. And now we can kind of bring that in a little bit so we don't have as much of a green halo around stuff. So here's before, here's after, okay? We can also blur this just a touch and that'll really start to kind of crop in here Let's blur this just a little more so that we're really getting rid of that green outline, see? And we're just keeping the part of our skin that we want. Now, this is contracting in just a little bit, but nobody's gonna notice it. We wanna be as gentle as we can, but we don't want that green outline. So we'll go with that. And of course, that's helped everywhere. We kind of getting rid of that green and it does a pretty good job. Now, the problem with doing this is that look at our hair, look at our hair detail. Our hair detail sucks. We're getting rid of all this detail in our hair and it's just ruining things. So what we can do is we can limit what we're doing with this matte control to not affect our hair. An easy way to do that is just to draw a mask around what we wanna keep out or what we want to keep in. And so we might do something like go to maybe the middle of our footage here. I can grab a polygon mask put that into our mask input here. And let's just set this to invert. And so now anything that's not in this mask will get affected by our matte control. And so I'm just gonna select what I don't want to be affected by the matte control, which would be our hair like this. And depending on your shot, and how complicated it is, you might have to do quite a bit of work on Roto, but basically we are selecting the part that we don't want to be affected. And we're gonna have to kind of Roto it to make sure it looks good. Soften this edge just a tiny bit. And so now we're keeping that hair detail around our hair, but we're making a transition right where it intersects the rest of her skin like that so that we keep the kind of choked key here for these hard edges and we keep the really nice soft hair key for the hair. And that's pretty much the idea. From there, we have to roto this shape, which can be miserable depending on how you set this up. It would actually probably be a good idea to make a couple different shapes here. And since this isn't a Roto tutorial, you kind of get the idea. Fortunately for us, I have a Roto already finished. I'll just connect that to our mask input, get rid of the one we were working on. And this just makes a nice selection of her hair throughout the clip and moves and adjusts as she moves. So now we have our clip with a great key on her hair and a great key on the rest of her. Now it's time to put her over a real background. So instead of this pink background, we're going to use an image and I'll just merge this over our background like this. And here we have this image behind her. Now, if you've ever tried to look up green screen tutorials, this is generally where the green screen tutorial stops and they go, yeah, and then you just put it on whatever background you want. <sighs> and the problem with that is that uh, this part is pretty essential to making it look good and not a lot of people teach you what to do with it. So guess what? We're gonna jump into that. Let's move this over. This is gonna be our background here. And the first thing we need to do is color manage this background. I'll hit shift space bar, color space transform. This is just a JPEG from the internet. And so we'll start with sRGB and we're gonna bring this into DaVinci wide gamut linear with no tone mapping. That's gonna bring these both into the same color space so that they interact with each other better. And let's do some color correction here. I'll just 
open up a color corrector. And what we really need to do is match the darkest parts of this image and the brightest parts of the image so that these look like they live in the same world, okay? The darkest parts of our foreground, we can mouse over and right here in kind of the bottom of our interface here, we'll see where it says color R, G, and B. And so if we mouse over that, we can see kind of the levels of where a really dark part of our foreground lives. And so this is like 0 0.08, 0 0.09, something like that. Let's grab like the darkest parts of our hair. The darkest we should really be is like 0 0.09, something like that. And so let's kind of mouse this over. This is maybe just a little too dark. So we can take the lift and push this up a little bit until this says, okay, this is 0 0.09, something like that. So we're just lifting that up a little bit. We also wanna do kind of a similar thing for the bright parts. And so we're gonna sample kind of the brightest parts of our image here. So probably this white part on her shirt. This is like 0 0.52, 0 0.53, somewhere in there. Any place where it's really bright. Yeah, 0 0.53 or so. So the bright parts on this image, if they're really supposed to be really bright, they should be at least that. So this is like 0.51. So I think we could probably take the gain up just a touch here. 0.56, I think something like that. So the light source should always be brighter than what it's actually lighting. And so I think something like that is gonna look a little better. The other thing is I feel like the background here is maybe a little warm because this foreground is a little bit cooler. So we can take the background here and just push this a little bit cooler, just a touch to where it looks like these things match a little bit. So this white here, looks pretty much like the white on her shirt, and there we go. The other thing we need to do is make sure that the lighting's matching pretty well. The light on her is coming from the left, and the light here in the background is coming from the right. So it's nice because we can just make a transform for our background and flop this so that we have the light coming here from the left, and that's gonna match a little better. And this is already looking better than it was. So here, if we disable this, here's before and here's after. It's already looking a lot better could even maybe take the background lift up just another touch, something like that. And now we'll also have to think about the perspective here. This works the best when you know the focal length and the camera height and everything of both the foreground and the background. Unfortunately, we don't because we didn't shoot this green screen. We also didn't shoot the background, but we can roughly estimate this. This foreground looks like it was shot on kind of a longer lens. I would say maybe like a 50 millimeter or so. And the height of the camera, I think is probably around where her elbow is, something like that. So we wanna make sure that the camera height matches. If you follow all of these lines to a vanishing point, everything comes together right around the top of this sink. So we wanna make sure that the top of the sink and her elbow are relatively about the same place, something like that. We also wanna make sure that the size of the background makes sense. This background is shot on a much wider lens, something probably like a 24 millimeter, something like that. It's kind of hard to guesstimate those things, but it's something like that. Again, the very best thing to do is to actually know this stuff and have measured it and shot it yourself, but you generally don't get a wide angle shot like this without a wide angle. So I'm thinking something around 24 or 26 ish. And there's actually a formula to figure out how big this background should be based on the focal length and the sensor size of the background versus the foreground. I'm not gonna get super into that because it's just crazy, but it ends up being about 1.3 or so. And again, let's kind of adjust this background. And again, for this to be like exactly right, you want to have measured things, but for the sake of this tutorial, you wanna try and get it close, okay? So now we have our transform and this is roughly put where it needs to be. And the last thing I wanna do is blur this background a little bit. So let's add a lens blur. This is, I believe, only available in the studio version of Resolve, but man, it's, uh, it's so great. It actually gives you this nice kind of realistic bokeh from the lens. I'll take this blur size down, and I just want to push it up a little bit just so it softens a touch. And now we have a little bit more realistic background here. And you can kind of adjust this to taste, you might think this needs to come up or down, but it's somewhere in there. And now we have a much more realistic composite here than we had in the beginning where we just slapped something behind it. This looks very green screeny. The other one is, you know, halfway believable. All from matching the colors, matching the lighting direction, estimating the sizing, the background, the vanishing point, camera height, all of that stuff is important.
So here's a comp that I made earlier. Only other thing that we added here is this grain. It's important, especially if you're working with a still in the background that you have some grain that kind of dances around because that's what actual video footage looks like. And since we also removed the grain from our foreground, we wanna add that back in and have that grain in the foreground match the grain in the background. If you wanna learn more about grain and regraining things, uh, let me know, we'll do a video on it. But that's kind of the last step to make sure things kind of tie together. And here's our finished composite, pretty good green screen, lots of nice hair detail, good detail here on the edges. And that's how you do it in Fusion. If you're getting into Fusion and you want to get a little bit more advanced, you like things like this, we have a whole course on it. Pro Compositing in Fusion, we got basic and advanced. So no matter where you're at in your Fusion learning journey, you can dive in and get fancy in the Fusion page. So make sure to check that out. That's available now at groundcontrol.film. And thanks for, thanks for stopping by, San Diego. <laughs> I've never said that. There have been hundreds of videos. I've never said that. It seemed like a thing to say. You stay classy, YouTube from that movie.